Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Nicole Petalides live at the New York Stock Exchange. Glad you are with us and joining me is a very special guest. Ross Gerber is with us, President and CEO Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Good to see you, Ross Gerber. I haven't seen you in some time. Are you feeling no, bullish, bearish, cautious? I mean, how are you feeling? No, about I'm feeling really more? bullish. This is as good as it gets, you know? I mean, we've been waiting for a, a long time for the Fed to stop destroying business. And, and now, despite all the attempts that the Fed has made to destroy the economy, it's managed to keep going strong. So, you know, it's it's really kind of the best of all worlds right now with the, giving the Fed the ability to not have to lower interest rates because they have to. You know, that's actually great news. So a 3% growth rate in the economy and a 3% inflation rate is actually a great economy. Um, you know, what's there not to like? We expect good earnings in Q1. You know, it's not a super too hot economy, but it's certainly not too cold either. All right. So that certainly sounds like a take. Um, and that's good, good synopsis overall. Um, I'd love to hear about some of the names that you're talking about today. I got to talk about Tesla, the worst performer in the S&P 500 this year or among the worst performers, down 35 percent. And I just I, you know, I'd love to hear your insight. I know you um, have talked, I guess, with Elon Musk at some point. It was a name that you liked. He's certainly smart and a visionary. But the questions are, is he distracted? Is AI going somewhere other than Tesla? And and that was part of the value of Tesla was the AI story. And is he going to separate that? Um, we saw the launch. I saw the launch yesterday on the rocket or maybe it's the day before. I mean, that was exciting. What's the big picture on Tesla? It's at 163 today. Yeah, I mean, I think the big picture, which you kind of summed up pretty well, is that, you know, a lot of things I've been saying over the last six, seven months have finally come to fruition. I've been warning investors in Tesla for a long time about the fact that Elon Musk's lack of focus and his political stances in support of white supremacy and other very, very controversial, if not just basically wrong ideas, you know, is really turned off a core demo of consumers for Tesla and has hurt demand here in the United States. On top of, you know, incredible levels of competition in China and now the German, you know, echo terrorist issue that Tesla's facing with the shutdown of the Berlin factory and enormous cost to get it up again. This quarter is not looking great for Tesla. Meanwhile, the CEO continues to spend a majority of his time on X discussing issues that nobody at Tesla really wants to discuss. So, you know, it's created a, a revaluation. We, we look at the story differently now. It's not the same Tesla story as three years ago or two years ago. The, the way we look at it now is Tesla needs to come down to a valuation that makes sense for a company that's not growing earnings, that has issues, but yet still has this like amazing long-term potential if there was some focus on building this brand, like advertising to start. So so we think, you know, 40 times this year's earnings is a fair multiple for Tesla. That brings you down to 120, you know, and that's unfortunate. So. You know, I hope that that doesn't happen, being a Tesla shareholder, but we've paired our position dramatically at our firm over the last six months. And I'm grateful I've done that because we reinvested those proceeds into AI investments that have paid off dramatically and our clients have benefited greatly from this change. 120. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's I mean, why don't you sell it? Yeah, are you selling that everything? 40 I mean, times $3 well in earnings. Well. Yeah, 40 yeah. times $3 is 120. You know, explain to me why it deserves a higher multiple than Nvidia, Microsoft. You know, it just doesn't deserve a higher multiple than Nvidia right. and Microsoft. And that's just where I'm at. All right. Now, if you're going to tell me earnings are going to go much higher in 2020, you know, 5, right now they're $4 earnings. People are already lowering those estimates for 2025 now. You know, some people are down in the threes again. So even if you do 40 times 2025 earnings, you're at 160. So there's not a lot of impetus here to say that the stock should be worth substantially more than where it's trading. And that's, okay. I think, the problem with Tesla. All right. Um, I'm going to leave that alone because uh, that's a lot for people to stomach for who were hoping for a lot more. Um, in the meantime, hope, hope Rivian, right, got Piper go. Sandler. Wait, hope, what? Hope doesn't get you anywhere in the stock market, okay? 
I know, I know, but there was a lot of, of expectations when it came to AI and full self-driving and, and his vision, and that's why people were betting on the upper end. I'm going to leave yeah, that but alone, but I will there. also add that... Paul, he's got to work at the company every day to achieve these visions, right. and that's, that's my point, is if the CEO doesn't work there, and he used to sleep at the factory, so why isn't he sleeping at the factory now to get full self-driving working? It doesn't even work on the Cybertruck. You know, there's so many software things on the Cybertruck that need to be updated. Like, there's so much work to be done at Tesla. There's literally no excuse that he's not working there every day. Okay. I'm going to try again to leave Tesla. I'm trying really hard to leave Tesla. Leaving Tesla, I'm going to mention Rivian, which got some positive comments today. Piper Sandler put an overweight, for example. I don't know if that's a winner, but I will mention something in the EV vehicles to transition over to some other names that you do like. Um, Lennar in home building. Online gambling, crypto, are these areas you do like? Can you give us a, a, a sentence on each of those? Yeah, you know, obviously Vegas is doing great. They just announced the new stadium for the A's, more sports coming to Vegas. MGM is in a prime position with online gambling becoming profitable now, as, as well as China becoming profitable again. MGM stock just really hasn't reflected its true value in my mind. So that's an opportunity. The home builders are really doing well, Lennar being a leader in the industry, but with all the different uh, things lining up, you know, just tremendous demand for single family homes. Lennar is really in a prime position with a very low valuation. So on the pullback after earnings, we liked Lennar and it's rallying today. Um, and then of course, Bitcoin and cannabis, which have major opportunities right now with the having of Bitcoin coming, um, as well as the ETFs, just you know, tremendous inflows into Bitcoin. Um, we're long that in our ETF, GK. We're the only U.S. equities ETF in the entire world that actually owns Bitcoin. And, and we've made money on this position and we're very bullish on it. And we're hoping for cannabis rescheduling in the next month. And we also own MSOS in our ETF for this reason. So we see these as, you know, higher risk opportunities for sure, but with very high upside potential if things work out for this. So we've added those exposures to our fund. All right, I have two questions, a Bitcoin question and an AI question. The Bitcoin question is, um, you know, we had on Mark Connors from 3IQ. He was talking about the halving, too, and he thought that would be a good catalyst. In fact, he saw, he saw a base case of 110000 for Bitcoin and seeing it go up to 160 to 180000 When I asked him about a million, he said, well, in the next 10 years, it's doable, maybe. Um, but do you think that 100000 is something we could see soon? or this year on Bitcoin? Well, I, I try to stay away from prices with Bitcoin because it's 100% related to the dynamics of supply and demand and perception. It's not really based off a true you know, economic value like MGM, for example. And so with Bitcoin, what it is, is what are the supply and demand you know, okay. factors affecting it. And right now we have tremendous demand from ETFs that are constantly buying Bitcoin on top of the fact that the halving yeah. will create half as much supply at the same time. So just, right. you know, from okay. a fundamental basis, seeing Bitcoin double from here would probably make sense in my mind. Yeah. And last but not least, you mentioned about moving some money out of Tesla, pairing that a little bit and, and moving money into AI. What were your AI picks that you moved your money into? Well, our top pick at our firm and our fund has been NVIDIA, which has obviously played out a little bit here. Great one, so yeah. really, I think for investors, it's challenging because many of the AI plays have, have rallied substantially. So, so what are some of the ones that maybe have a, a little bit more reasonable valuation? And you had a, a pick like Oracle, which is in our fund, which just rallied nicely, which hasn't seen its valuation go into this, you know, stratosphere yet. So this is a really yeah. strong play. They also host all the data for TikTok. And so if TikTok gets acquired by a U.S. company, you know, Oracle will continue to benefit greatly. So hopefully, you know, that will happen. Um, and so, like, it's really hard in AI because a lot of the, the plays have played out, whether so we own AMD, for example. ASML is also an interesting stock, even though it has a high valuation. They'll benefit greatly from the huge amounts of investments in increasing chip production. So there's lots of ways to play it. Um, and we're looking at the infrastructure as a really interesting way to play it. But now we're starting to look at software names and other names that should benefit as secondary beneficiaries of AI. 
Yeah. All right. I wrote all those down. Do you have TikTok on your phone? Yes or no? No, absolutely not. I okay, hate it. Thank it's you, the Ross devil. Gerber. Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. We have to go. You have to go. Thank you.